Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to give another history lesson, this time on streaming video and streaming audio. I was part of a groundbreaking live stream setup that pushed the boundaries of what was possible with technology at the time. Now remember, this is two years before YouTube released live uh, streaming on their platform. They didn't, do, they didn't introduce it until 2013. And it didn't roll out for, I believe it was a couple of years uh, because they only offered it to their top tier creators and, and people that were involved in testing their platform anyway. So yeah, they didn't offer it to all of us little guys. They offered it to those first. So we didn't get a chance to, to opt in. But it's funny how we think that streaming is a new thing. Uh, Real-time video, multi-channel, audio, live chat, overlays, virtual stages are pretty much all staples of today's digital world. But in our little corner of the Internet, we were too dumb to know if it would work or fail. We just tried it. And when I, I know that there was, there was people that were doing live video with, you know, posted stamps <laughs> videos. But... That's not what we wanted. What we wanted was well, HD. Uh, so we wanted 1080 at, at least 30 frames per second and would prefer 60 uh, because, you know, the, there's a lot of motion that goes on in playing an instrument, and we wanted that to come through clearly. Back then, it was just me and my ex-wife. We played music live, and we wanted to bring that experience into Second Life where people were gathered in virtual venues. They'd be dancing as avatars, and they would usually be listening to streamed sets by uh, DJs. We, we weren't DJs, and, uh, but we, were, we did live performances, so we were a live act. But that meant we had to solve problems that no one else was really trying to tackle. Sure, people did live audio in Second Life, but not video, not video. No, nobody. I, I don't remember anybody trying that. Second Life had the ability to do it, and they've had the ability to do it since their inception, but it, it was too obscure, too difficult to set up, and it was based on uh, Apple's QuickTime server, which had been deprecated. So, yeah, it, you could still get it, and it was an old version, but it didn't work well. It took quite a bit to set up, and every person in the venue would have had to have that set up in order to see it. Then how do you sync? So one of the problems that we hit early on was how do you sync live vocals and guitars to a digital stage while broadcasting to an audience? We had some people watching the, the show on video and others standing in a virtual nightclub watching the show. So how do you do that? We started out with one machine that was the Mac Pro Intel version from 2011, the, the, the cheese grater Mac, but this was the Intel cheese grater. Ours had a single socket. Uh, there was one that had dual, but man, it was expensive. Uh, yeah, you could double the price and then keep going. It was, it was pretty powerful for its day. And it was able to handle the audio mixing, and we did mid-side mic arrays for stereo imaging. Uh, we did real-time monitoring to know what we were listening to so that we knew, you know, the vocals weren't being drowned out by the guitars or vice versa, or that one of us wasn't, out, wasn't drowning the other out during the performance, so we, it required a headphone amp. Uh, and four mics because you needed one for vocal and one for uh, the instrument in order to put that together. Plus, we had the mid-side uh, mics that were out in the middle of the room so to pick up the ambient uh, sound. So, And we piped all that through the either ice cast or shout cast that went into Second Live. That was the audio side. But at the same time, we used uh, live streams application I think it was called Live View, and that would allow you to hook up your cameras into it, and then it was really meant to have a single feed out of it. And so we used Wirecast to actually try to mix. Oh boy, was that a mistake. 
But, you know, it worked okay. It, it just didn't work all that great. We started out with USB cameras. No, that was not a good idea either. Uh, yeah, so we eventually moved to real cameras uh, and that with with capture cards and that really helped because that offloaded a lot of the processing that went on. And we had to choose something uh, uh, something that would be more reliable on a day-to-day -day basis. We didn't want to crash in the middle of a one-hour set. That Yeah, that, people usually leave when that happens. So... Yeah, so <laughs> we didn't want to do that. So just to be accurate, we were not the first to perform live audio in Second Life, nor were we the first to do live video because most of them would do that postage stamp thing. And and no, that's not. We were in the in the forefront of doing uh, HD video. That's where we were at, and that's a that's, that's a different world back then. Yeah, think about it. I mean, think of the bandwidth that you had available to you on internet back in, back what almost 14 years ago. But we were the first to combine live video with it, and we created a fully synchronized audio visual experience inside of a virtual set. Uh, so yeah, you could watch the video from from the venue. We would put up you know a screen, and they could see that uh, as well. So yeah. We were sending video and audio to live streams and audio alone to SL so they could listen to the recording in, in, highest, in the highest quality. While, all the while recording the performance to disc and that poor Mac Pro, it was screaming. The fans were running at full bore. They were so loud that we had to move the machine into another room. Otherwise, it would end up on the audio. So that was, I would say, talks more about Unix than Apple's OS at that point because we were utilizing the power of Unix that was under the cover and not, not too much of Mac OS directly. But yeah, we had we yet we ran ZFS on that Mac OS. Uh, it was it had a host controller and that host controller was attached to four spinning drives in, an, in a custom enclosure. Uh, because we couldn't afford to lose a performance because we wanted to keep it for later. So eventually we upgraded uh, to, uh, to having two iMacs pre-process each side of, so uh, my stream, both video, audio, and all of that would go through my iMac and her iMac would, go, would take care of hers. The Mac Pro would consolidate them, aggregate them together, and then push it to live stream. In order to reduce the uh, reduce the amount of overhead on the Mac Pro, because all of live stream expected H.264 encoding. I mean, you could do others, but it, it wasn't as good. So we got one of these. This is a Teradek video. This is the original model. It's no longer available, but it had two things on the back. First is this HDMI port, and then this is the Ethernet port, 100 meg Ethernet, and, uh, and then it had some audio jacks on the back and power, and that was it. On the front is where there was this little window where you could see kind of a, a, a vision of the screen, and you could tell it where you wanted to stream this to. Uh, whether it be Twitch or whether it be live stream or, or even another device like this. So you could send the whole thing across uh, to another site. Teradek has, uh, you know, they, they've been kind of the leaders in remote uh, video and remote audio too, for that matter. That's kind of their thing. So this kind of made sense. And this completely auto offloaded the H.264 encoding. This had a, a built-in encoder into it. So that took a heck of a load off of the Max. So, but we didn't stop there. Uh, w once we had that part working, we invited a guest musician from the UK to join us live. And so it took us a little bit to set it up. We, we sent our stream to him. This was just the audio stream. And then he would play over top of that. So he would play in live... Uh, with the stream that was being sent to him, that avoided the latency of live streaming. So he would, re and then he would, he would send that back to us. 
and then w that would then go back into the video. So, but originally we didn't have that working, and you'll notice on one of them where we tried to get that working and it didn't, uh, just because it, it was just too slow to 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 be meaningful in any way. Hi everybody! Yay! All right, I'm gonna do some uh, mostly blues for you. We're gonna start out with a um, song called Backwater Blues. Will it rain by me? The sky turns dark as night. So, yeah, it was completely out of sync with the video, and that just didn't work out for us. But we figured that out eventually. But, yeah, it was kind of total chaos. <laughs> but the second time we tried it, it worked. And this two-wave inter inter international live collaboration, using nothing but do-it-yourself routing and a bit of luck and some open-source streaming tools, uh, really made all of this possible. Our setup added about, I would say, 25 seconds of total delay in both the capture of the stream on our end and him receiving it. In spite of all those early teething problems, it just worked. Uh, and we managed to pull off some real, uh, some real time cross Atlantic live performances, even though we had significant delays. Uh, and we improvised a monitoring setup that worked for us. So it wasn't perfect, but it was good enough uh, to get the job done and for us to be able to, to still be able to hear things and make it work. We didn't just do this once, though. We partnered with our harmonica player at least 10 times uh, during the course of a year based on his schedule and ours. And to the audience, whether they turned on uh, the second live or the live stream, it looked and sounded like a concert. Finally, everything smoothed out by about 2012, and things were really working reliably and very well, as far as that kind of an application is concerned. But, you know, it hasn't really changed much. You still have, it's just different. It's doing all those same things, it's just doing it dedicated for you, and you don't have to worry about it. Anyway, let's go look at that, and then we'll come back, and I'll give you my final thoughts. <laughs> what an entrance. Hi, Bill.
so there's not really much to talk about other than I hope you enjoyed that look of history. Uh, I look back and kind of chuckle at how bad we really were. But, you know, people didn't care. They they enjoyed it. It was something different. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we did get better. Uh, we it, Yeah, we did get better. Uh, but, uh, yeah, those early days were, uh, you know, it was... You're trying to you're trying to do too many things. You're trying to concentrate on getting all the technical stuff to work, and then the performance. That was that was the primary th reason why you were there. But always it was the secondary thing to trying to get it working and keep it working. Eventually, though, as stability came, that was less of a headache, and we didn't have to worry about that so much. The other problems that we had was was the the monitor mix and the headphones was never loud enough or it was too loud or you know one of us was louder than the other so yeah th those became part of the setup process before going live and that added time to it and a little bit of friction too I might add <laughs> between us so yeah that wasn't always the best thing uh, but anyway I <laughs> hope Hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave your comments below, and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye for now. And if you want to try something new, no matter what it is, give it a go. I mean, don't be afraid. Try it. You know, the only thing you're going to do is waste your time, but if you have an idea, it's always worth to try it out. And don't let somebody go, oh, that's stupid. You can't make that work. Don't listen to that. That, the, the whole world around us was built by people that were crazy, that were told that there was no way in hell any of that would work. And now it's all basic basic knowledge. It's, that's, how it, that's how it works. So don't be afraid to try. That's the message of the video.